Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. The fun thing, I did get my jersey, Darren, and you know what? Right out of the chute, maybe we can get to the bottom of something right now. I paid, I'm not going to say how much, but enough. Below market value, I would say, for this Alexander Barkov reverse retro jersey of the Florida Panthers. Met a guy in the concourse, not going to name him. Found him in the Panthers uh, Facebook group. Exchanged money, great guy. Stopped and showed it to a lot of other Panthers fans that were wearing one of these types of jerseys. We compared the stitching, the numbers, because I didn't want to get ripped off. I didn't want it to be a Chinese knockoff. And they're like, no, 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 this is this good. You're legit, bro. You're good to go. Everything's the same. I couldn't have been happier about it. And some, some guy just wrote in to the Twitter, the Cats and Bolts podcast, and said, hope you didn't pay a lot for it because it's a Chinese knockoff, the ones that are made in China and sold for $20. And I'm like, I, how do you know how it feels real? I've felt those fake jerseys. It doesn't feel like that. How do you know what's legit and not? And by the way, I don't feel bad because I... Well, I was buying the real thing, and I, I think that it is. How do you know whether it's not? I, I don't know. I mean, other than, you know, when it's really bad, you can just tell, look, feel, the stitching, yeah. all the rest. You know, you've seen some of those logos that are actually backwards because they make the mistake, um, <laughs> all the rest. But if it looks good, if it looks real, if it feels real, if you think it's real, then what's the big deal? It's not like you're putting it up for it auction like or duck. putting it in the Smithsonian. Qu Quacks like a duck. Yeah, no, we're going to hang it on the set of the Cats and Bolts podcast. I'll wear it on special occasions. And by the way, we're in the middle of a holy war here, which we'll get to. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. Breaking news out of the NBA. It has banned Toronto Raptors two-way player Jonte Porter for life. The league said another individual known to be an NBA better placed an $80,000 bet that Porter would not hit the number set for him in parlays through an online sports book. That bet would have won $1.1 million. And they're not fooling around with this. They say, if you're doing wrong, we're going to find you. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hi, everybody. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Rick Regan. Welcome inside, everybody. It's the RP Show. It's a Thursday. It just feels like Wednesday's rolling on into Thursday, and we'll roll on into Friday. Stopping for two hours here to talk sports and have fun with you, the viewers on Game Plus Television and on the radio. Key Radio, WQEE in Atlanta, 99.1 FM. And uh, the streams. I'm in the Florida studio. Moose is in the Toronto studio. We've got a lot to talk about. Hi, Moose. Come on in. Hi. How about that? Yeah. How's your, how's your day going, Moose? What's up? Day's going great. I mean, you can't complain. Um, this is the... I hate this. I was going to say this is the best time of year, man. It really is. But then I also think the <laughs> fall's pretty good. So, you know, if I say it now and say it again, don't hold that against me. Uh, not only will I not hold it against you, I won't be surprised. But I'll pick a side on this one and say, this is the best time of the year, baby. And I full-on believe it. You won't hear me say it in the fall. And over the topic, uh, over the next two hours and these six topics, you'll find out why. Can you hit the show horn, please, Director Jordan? And we'll fire it up. We'll fire it up. Coming up, just to tantalize everybody's whistle, in the Quick Six Show topics, we've got NHL, NHL, Blue Jays, NBA, junior hockey playoffs, and then randoms where people can throw in whatever they want. But number one, we do it every day, the big story. And to be honest, it changed. Like, here's, here's what it is. My timeline is full. My vortex is full this morning and this afternoon with this. Place line, Tempe, Arizona. Arizona closed out their 28-year tenure as winners getting a goal and an assist from Dylan Genther in a 5-2 victory over the Edmonton Oilers on Wednesday night. The Coyotes buzzed early at Mullen Arena and closed strong in their final game before moving to Salt Lake City. Now, here's me. Me? Close the book, move on, what's next? Hi, Salt Lake, what's up? What do you got for us? No, 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 no. 
because what I see on social media today, and it was all over NHL radio and even ESPN, and I understand this is no small thing. Teams don't move markets, you know, uh, regularly. Oakland A's are doing it. Now the Arizona Coyotes are doing it. I'm seeing an outpouring from the broadcasters, obviously the fans, the staff, the team's social media, and um, I'm not that emotional over it. I don't live there but I have spent a lot of time there. I feel like it's a little overboard. For the people that are involved, I get it, um, because they're going to have to move and so forth. But I'm going to be honest, nobody died. Nobody died here. Life will go on. So I feel like they can spend 24 hours on that and then look to the future. That's what I think about it, and I, I'm probably alone in that. What's your take on the Coyotes' last game and them moving? <laughs> Poor Coyotes fans. You know, if we had gotten some sort of clarity from the NHL, Rod, how about in January, okay? If we had found out in January, this team is moving to Salt Lake City, the Coyotes would have made the playoffs, man. If they played like that last season, they would have kept it rolling right into the playoffs. Um, no, it was, you know, it was kind of a, a sad night for sure. Uh, they, they ended right. They got a win, all the rest. But at the end of the day, we're going to forget about this pretty fast because it's not a memorable, you know, stay in the desert. And we're, they're going to move to Salt Lake City and it's going to be what it's going to be. And we're going to forget about it pretty fast. Do I think they'll come back? I don't know. We'll, you know, have time to think about that. But it, it's, it's over now. And I think we're going to forget pretty fast. Wow. You beat me last night in our breakaway picks, three to two. You had, we both had the Coyotes winning their last game. It's like the Oilers weren't even going to try. They're just going to lay down. Let the Coyotes win their last game. But this is going to make a hell of a book, and I'll buy it. It's going to make a fantastic 30 for 30 documentary. And I'm seeing now stuff that I was talking about last week, looking ahead to what was going to be the last game and the team moving jobbing.com arena wayne gretzky was the head coach keith kachuk jeremy roenick obviously shane doan um there that's it's it's a generation they spent there but a lot of people in arizona are waking up going <sighs> and i don't blame them but they couldn't even sell out a 4900 seat rink the last two years so just cool it with the outpouring of I understand some people are upset, but I just feel that it's overboard. And so, to, and, and we've bashed the owner enough, Alex Morello. Believe me, I've spent the last 22 hours on the phone talking about why this is being dealt with the way that it is, and I'm seeing why it's being dealt the way that it is. They don't want to tick him off because he could throw a fit and be a child like a lot of billionaire narcissists do and make this really ugly for the NHL. So they're like, here's your billion. Thanks, Alex. But it is bad, because if you dig a little further into the mentions on social media and what the commenters are saying, it's that the owner's kids take it over the Twitter. The owner's kid is tweeting on behalf of the Arizona Coyotes, and I'm like, triggered! Working for owner's kids. Say no more. So literally, it's just a big check. Thanks. It was fun. Bye. And now it leads to this, our poll question today. Do you think the NHL will return to Arizona? I'm going to go right out on a limb and say no. And the uh, poll I checked, the last I checked on Twitter, we put it on Twitter and YouTube, 69% of respondents saying no, the NHL is not coming back to Arizona. I don't think that it will. A lot of hurdles would have to be cleared for that to happen, and they haven't even... It's not happening, brah. What are you voting? I vote yes. Um, you know, what's that saying? Never's a long time, right? Um, I, I think yes. I think the NHL will come back. Do I think it will be in this iteration, in, the, like in this five-year window that Morello has? I don't, I, I don't know that I can predict that. But I think they're going to come back to the desert at some point. But I just pray to the hockey gods that when they come back, it's with solid ownership, it's with extremely competent management, and they put a winner on the ice for once. Uh, that's all I hope if they're going to come back to the desert. But I'll vote yes. Uh, it's hilarious to say that. <clears throat> Before I go any further, two things. 
I dipped into the YouTube stream to see what's going on in there. So far, nothing really interesting. So as Jim Rohn would say, have a take and don't suck. Make it interesting, guys and gals, and I'll read your comment. And in the text line for Sober Carpenter, non-alcoholic craft beer is 902-518-3033. Trevor in Red Deer writes in and says, I just have to say that Moose has the best hair in the business. So there you go, Moose. The comments are flowing today just like you mean there's no good comment that's a great comment i follow along grasshopper i said in the youtube stream there's nothing interesting Uh, there so i went to the sober carpenter text line and trevor yes follow he's got great hair not a lot underneath it (laughs) too much hair deeping through the pores (laughs) it's like sniffing glue Okay, yes, move it on. Point, yeah, point two. Sticking with the National Hockey League, Austin Matthews came up empty in his bid to become the ninth player in NHL history to score 70 goals in a game. But Tampa Bay's Nikita Kucherov became the fifth player to have a 100-assist season as Tampa Bay beat Toronto. Was it 6-4 last night? I wasn't even paying attention. You're going to see what I was watching last night. It wasn't that game, and I realized why. My man crush, Mike Johnson. I happened to tune in NHL radio an hour later today than I normally do, and Mike Johnson was on. I was like, <gasps> everybody, shh, shh, shh. Johnny's talking. And he said, How, what a weird game it was because nobody really cared who won. And he was on with Gord Stellick, and Gordy agreed. He was like, we were all tuned in. I wasn't, but they were to see if Austin Matthews would get his 70th, and he didn't, and if Cooch would get his 100th, and he did. But Johnny said, this flies against everything we profess and believe in the game. It's not about one guy on each team, or at least it shouldn't be. And for that reason, to be honest, I was watching the, uh, I was watching the Miami Heat, which we'll get to. Um, thoughts on Cooch hitting 100 and Austin not hitting 70? Yeah, weird night is a, is a great way to put it. Um, I don't know. I mean... It feels like everybody feels like a huge letdown. We're, you know, kind of waiting and watching this you know, race for 70 goals and it doesn't happen. And I feel like it's going to take away from the season that he had. I mean, 69 goals, still pretty phenomenal. Um, of anybody in the National Hockey League, it's the greatest season goal scoring wise that we've seen, um, you know, from anybody that's in the game. But Cooch hitting 100 was awesome. I loved how, uh, how everybody was just all over that, how much fun that looked like it was. and. Um, Brayden Point getting the goal. Uh, I think it was a power play goal. So it was a cool night, but it was a, it was a weird night at the same time. And you know, you could see some frustration from Matthews, and a little bit like I don't know, it's not going to happen, and I don't really care about playing this game. You know, at the end of the day, when you realize it's not going to happen, that frustration. And I have a you know a sixth sense, I feel like, or like this gut feeling that that's going to carry into the playoffs that you didn't hit the 70 and that individual thing was such a big thing that they were focused on that you go into the playoffs with this a bit of a I don't really care attitude and you meet Boston that could be pretty scary so hopefully they can snap out of that and this four game losing streak because it's been a really weird distraction Uh, hey they look like they were in la la land here Tuesday night in sunrise and shameless plug here for our podcast that'll drop any minute the Cats and Bolts podcast, we talked about this. My guy Benny Cobbs here in Sunrise said, uh, wrote in and said, who's ready for the playoffs? I'm like, I feel like everybody's been ready for the playoffs for six to eight weeks, including the Leafs. It's hard to keep the pedal to red line for as long as they have. Now, you know what I mean? That now they'll get a little bit of a break and then get ready. We're all been waiting for this for a long time. And for the teams that aren't in the Stanley Cup playoffs, it's most unfortunate for them. Johnny Gloa writes in, the uh, producer to the stars. Can we call him that? John says, it's just ridiculous that it's, <clears throat> pardon me, why do I eat <coughs> these energy bars just before we go to air? Breaking my own rule. He goes, it's just ridiculous that a city of 6 million people is going to fold and move to a city of 1.5 million or whatever Salt Lake City has. Quote by former NHL executive Brian Burke. Um, hey, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. I'm just going to, hey, 
Arizona didn't really make a lot of sense. The Salt Lake thing, what? I did talk to my guy, Jeff, hotelier to the stars this morning. He's been doing a lot more reading on Ryan Smith, the Utah owner, than I have. He says this guy seems like a sharp guy, has a lot of money, which is nice. He's going to spend. They plan to win. So maybe that's why. I'm not sure. Brent in Wellington, Florida says, 13 shots on goal, I think he had. Austin Matthews was hoping to see history times two last night. Austin hit 70. Cooch hit 100. Didn't happen. Um, uh, one last one from BW, before I move on, from BW in Edmonton. He said, what does the NHL and the WHL have in common? Find a new owner for existing teams that cannot deliver on new hockey arenas. Uh, uh, uh. He's talking about the Winnipeg ice moving to Wenatchee. I was, it's funny he brings the bright. It's, it's scary. Him and I are on the same wavelength. I feel like we would get along really well. In some of these leagues, they'll just take anybody's money. If you're check clears, they're good. And I think the NHL was that, but I don't think they're that anymore. You can't be a knob and be an NHL owner anymore just because you got money. Same thing in the NFL. For a long time, you could get away with it. Evidence Daniel Schneider in Washington. Here's $5 billion, Go away. You can't act the way that you did. That's not to say they're all great guys. I'm a Cowboys fan. I think Jerry Jones, probably the biggest narcissist roaming the earth. But Jerry makes the money. <laughs> right? Alex Marillo in Arizona wasn't making him any money. Dan Snyder wasn't making They were sucking them all down. So some of these leaks, CFLs and others, as long as you got enough money, we'll take you. I really believe that. Do you? To an extent, you know, you can have money, but they're not just going to give you a team just because you have money. You know, you look at, you said Daniel Snyder, and how about, you know, when Jim Balsley is trying to, you know, bully his way into the National Hockey League. You know, they're not just going to take that. But are you making the league money? Are you growing the league? You know, and are you, I say you know, doing those things? Then it doesn't matter, right? You can be a jerk, but if you're growing the league and making the league money, you know, and not having sexual harassment complaints and workplace violations and all the right, great. But if you have those things, if you're a headache for the league and you're not, and there's no upside, you're <clears> not making the money, then what's the issue here? We got to move on and find people who are going to be a positive for the league. And hopefully that's what Salt Lake City will be. Between the two of us, we have zeroed in on a moose, you and I. Uh, yeah. There's an ongoing lawsuit against Jerry Jones, a paternity suit. But he makes the NFL billions, so we'll look the other way. Alex Murillo, what have you done for us lately? Oh, your kid runs the Twitter account? Beat it. I will say this. The owners of the Saskatoon Blades for the longest time got a lot of guff from hockey people and people in the WHL. But here they are, which I will read the story coming up, going to the Eastern Conference Final for a second consecutive year. They'll be filling the Sastel Center by the time this is all done. So ba 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 bravo to the Priestners. They, they've put up with a lot. They didn't care. They went out and proved it. Not every ownership group can do that. Utah Darren writes in and says, hey, Rod, I said it earlier, Salt Lake City, it's not that bad. <laughs> I, sh I can't say anything about Salt Lake City. I've only been in the airport. My thoughts on Salt Lake City are from the movie Fletch and the line in Fletch. Provo, Utah isn't exactly a cure for boredom. But I shouldn't say that. I haven't been to Utah. Same thing, man. And maybe now we have a reason to go. I'm not dying to go. Like when Vegas was getting a team, I was dying to go to Vegas to watch them play. I'm not dying to go to Utah. I'm even now not. Do, uh, they don't even have direct flights to Salt Lake City, I don't think, out of anywhere in Canada or anywhere. But I digress. We got a lot to get to when we come back. We're live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The live sports experience is changing. 
teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Your favorite daytime sports talk show is at hand here on Game Plus TV and Key Radio. In Atlanta, 99.1 FM. Hey, Ryan O Radio, my friend Gil is in Atlanta. He said he's tuned in right now, so let's all say a big hello to Gil in Atlanta, listening on Key Radio. Howdy, Gil. Hey, everybody, re reward your love of movies by signing up for Landmark Extras for free today. Do it today. What you'll get for that is free movies and concession items, invites to exclusive screenings, special events, and more. There are three programs to choose from, one to fit your life. Details are at LandmarkCinemas.com. Let's please bring in the moose, and I'm just going to keep rolling with the sports because that's what people want. We'll get goofy later. So point three of our quick six show topics, Giancarlo Stanton homered in the ninth inning, and Aaron Judge added a go-ahead two-run double to lead the Yankees to a 6-4 comeback win over the Toronto Blue Jays. Stanton hit a solo shot off Eric Swanson to kick off a four-run outburst that prevented a three-game sweep. Dalton Varsho had two home runs for the Jays, who took a two-run lead into the ninth. They're off today. Any thoughts on the Jays before I just keep moving on? 
Yeah, those are going to be tough ones when you look back on the season, those, you know, blown leads in the ninth. But, you know, they're still waiting for Jordan Romano to come back. And, um, you know, but the Jays are right there with the best that they're playing with the Yankees. They're, we just beat the series. They've kind of got it figured out a little bit here. Just uh, need to clean up a few things. You know, it's wild, by the way. We were watching the game at the Yard House because it's our weekly tradition. Frankly, the highlight of my week. No offense. We tape the Cats and Bolts podcast, and then we go to the Yard House and have appetizers for 50% off. The Jays game was on the MLB network, and I'm sitting there watching, and I don't know why I wasn't paying attention to this in other home games on this homestand. The stadium doesn't look anything like it used to. How do you, did they gut the whole innards of Rogers Center? It looks like a brand new ballpark. A, and B, yeah. do we not all remember, was it just before COVID or during COVID, they unveiled the splashy designs for the new uh, ballpark for the Blue Jays, which I think was going to be on the west side of downtown Toronto, open air, not retractable roof. I guess that's not happening. Uh, it's just not something I'm following a lot, right? Is it, what does it look yeah. like inside Rogers Center? You've been there. I have not since the Renos. It's completely different. You know, the, the stands coming down the first and third base line come and they jut out and they create all these new seats. You know, the aesthetics with new lounges in the outfield and bars up on the fifth deck are look great. Concessions are all upgraded. And the color scheme, it's all now a deep navy blue. All the seats, all the outfield walls with little touches of that baby blue. Um, it, it looks pretty good. It looks really, really good. Um, you know, they they still have to fill some of those extra seats, but you know, it, it looks like a completely different ballpark. That's awesome, man. I just, I don't get it. I never will. I never will. You talk about the aesthetics and that. I just, I go to the game to watch the game. Have my whole life. So as far as the party areas and that kind of thing. I, d I don't, but I understand why the teams are doing it. I think the Jays, did they not drop down 15,000 in capacity because of these renos and so forth? Didn't they sacrifice a lot of seats to do this? So I believe so. You know, it did. is, you know, the, the party deck is, was good. Like we went the other night, we were talking about it in our morning meeting that, you know, it was Jose Barrios gold glove bobblehead night. It's actually just over there. I should go pick it up. But um, nice. we, went er we went early and got the bobblehead. And, but we had to be there. Like the doors open an hour and a half before the game and the lineups to get these bobbleheads were crazy. So once you get in the door, what are you going to do for an hour and a half? Watch a little batting practice, but there's, you know, these lounges, comfortable places to sit, have a drink or some popcorn or a snack, hang out. There's TV screens everywhere. So it's pretty comfortable, you know, if you're going early and you want to make a day of it. Just thank you for that. Uh, checking in from the audience. Jen from the Four Seasons checks in. Jen with two N's. She says, good morning, y'all. May or may not believe it. Sure looked like Edmonton threw that game for the Yotes to win the last game there ever. I think we predicted that would happen yesterday, and we talked about it earlier. It was our first point. I don't think anybody would blame the Oilers if they didn't necessarily throw it, but didn't try too hard. But we did cover it a heck of a lot earlier. Um, from the text line, Tony and Cochran, the home of George Fox, writes in and says, As I turn 66 today, your discussion on jerk owners reminds me of Harold Ballard. Growing up watching the original six and both parents being from Ontario, I was a Leafs fan. Dave Keon was my idol. Until Ballard took over and destroyed the Leafs and changed my loyalty to the Blackhawks, Bobby Hull and the Esposito brothers. Ballard has to be the worst pro franchise owner in Canadian history. Dag Nabbit, he's got to be. 40 years later, the people are still talking about him. And I've brought it up on this show multiple times that um, my, f I don't want to name them because I don't want to out them, but my Leaf friends, former Leafs, they don't want to talk about Harold Ballard at all. Interestingly enough, though, it's funny because I talk about these owners a lot. I've been around them a ton. There are a lot of good owners, too. There are. As the day is long, these guys are. And then there's the other that it depends what side of the coin you're on. 
because I've worked with owners and around owners that when you're getting along with them and you're doing what they want you to do, life's fantastic. You know what I mean? The second, though, it changes, it can be real ugly. Like, for instance, Wendell Clark, I'll tell you a story. I was doing a banquet with Wendell Clark. He did like 30 minutes of Harold Ballard stories, and he loved Harold Ballard. You could see how anybody would love Wendell Clark if he was your player, right? And he said, he had Wendell. I know we're on the air in Toronto, so if this isn't true, somebody ask Wendell. This is the story as I remember it. He told it at Etonia, Saskatchewan. He had Wendell sit in the front row when Wendell was a rookie of the plane because he loved him that much. Come on, kid, come sit up here in the front. Sounds like something Harold Ballard would do. I don't know, but Tiger Williams also loves him. So anyways, Harold had a tough time uh, with his bladder. He was gone, going on in age. I told you that, right? Have I told you this story? So he said to the yeah. flight attendant, if I yell at you, get out of the way. I'm going to go open the door because I'm going to go out the door. Piss out the door. And he was serious. And so I guess before the plate, and this is before they took off. They weren't going to do it in the air. And they're sitting there, and Harold's like, oh, oh, oh. And he stands up, and he goes to go, gets halfway to the door and goes, too late. <laughs> Turn and sat down in his chair. That was Wendell. Wendell loved him. And as Tiger Woods, uh, Tiger Williams, sorry, will, would tell you, he loved Harold. Harold gave him a lot of money. His first contract was like $175,000 in 1974. Made Tiger a very wealthy man. So you don't have, it kind of depends what side you're on. They're not jerks to everybody. Right. You know? They got money. They, so, you know, they're, you don't become an owner just, you know, for no reason at all. Uh, some people love you. Some people hate you. It's the same thing with coaches and, and all the rest, you know? Um, but not a great yep. era um, and not, you know, the curse of Harold Ballard. Like, you know, there's a curse because of the guy. And that's kind of wild to think that you got a, a curse attached to your name. I think that Tony, this guy would know better than us. He's from there. And Tony, thanks for tuning in from Cochrane and spawning this conversation. Because as I said, I was talking to Hotelier Jeff this morning. We were talking about owner. He's an owner of a hotel, actually multiple hotels. And we were talking about Stan Kroenke of the Rams and the Avalanche and the Mammoth. We're like, whatever he's doing, we don't know. Whatever he's doing, he's doing right. He owns the Nuggets too, right? The reigning NBA champions. Don't know him, but whatever he's, he knows what he's doing. Brian and Hudson's Bay writes in and says, good morning, guys. Looking forward to the playoffs. I don't have a horse in the race, so just enjoy the hockey. Googled Salt Lake City. It looks beautiful. Mountains and trees reminds me of Kelowna. Have a good one, boys. I'm sure it is beautiful. I mean, nobody's trying to dump on them. It's just nobody ever thinks to go there. Moving on. Point four. Joel Embiid had 23 points, 15 rebounds, and one assist to Kelly Oubre Jr. on a go-ahead three-point play that led the 76ers to a 105-104 win over the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference play-in tournament game last night. And, oh, man, are they crying on the radio in Miami here this morning because MB, or, uh, Jimmy Butler left the game on crutches and is doubtful for Friday night's home game. 76ers move on to play the Knicks in the opening round of the playoffs, game one Saturday at MSG. Kobe White scored a career-high 42 points, and the Chicago Bulls advanced in the play-in tournament, knocking out Atlanta 131-116. So the Bulls visit the Heat here Friday night for a shot at the number eight seed in the Eastern Conference playoffs and a first-round matchup with the Celtics. So they think the game's over already here Friday night because Jimmy Butler. See, I was getting into the Heat. I wasn't even watching the Leafs. But I'll say this. I don't like the attitude, but that's the media for you. Did this Tampa Bay Lightning not win a Stanley Cup, go all the way and win a Stanley Cup of the bubble without Steven Stamkos because he had a broken leg? Their captain and best player? Like, just because your best player is hurt is no reason to fold up. Shut out the lights, boys. Point five, Igor Sidorov had a hat trick and two assists, powering the Saskatoon Blades to a 7-0 thumping of the Red Deer Rebels to complete a sweep in round two of that WHL playoff series. Jagger Furcus scored twice in the run of four unanswered goals for Moose Jaw that fueled the Warriors' 5-2 win over the Swift Current Broncos, giving them a 3-1 series lead. 
We got the voice of the Warriors coming up, James Gallo. Uh, and in Kelowna, Gabriel Zertek scored the eventual winner with 58 seconds left in the second period as the Kelowna Rockets avoided a sweep with a 2-1 win over the Prince George Cougars. I saw on Twitter that the Calgary Canucks captured the Alberta Junior Hockey League title. We're getting to the nitty grit, saying it again, the best time of the year. I'm sure James Gallo would agree. That's our five points. The sixth is randoms. What do you got in the 90 seconds we have left before you step aside? Am I going to have to predict another Blades Moose Jaw Warriors playoff series in the Western Hockey League? That's up to you. Because <laughs> I think that's they're going to meet you. in the Eastern Conference final. At least that's the way it's trending. I love it, man. The junior hockey How great playoffs. You jinxed uh, them. I know, right? Now it's not going to happen. Oh, Moose Jaw's going to, no. you know. But this is just fun. It's just really, really fun. Um, you know, it's filling my timeline and it makes me feel good. And, you know, Saskatoon, it, it's, it's great. Never won a league title. I don't want to jinx that either, but you know, you've lost one game now in two playoff series. Uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Um, it's only going to get tougher, but it's fun to watch. I just want to correct this. The place line says Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, but the game was in Swift. Yeah, it was in Swift last night. God. I get angry because you know that I pay a lot of money for this service. The least you could do is get it right. Oh, well. At least they got us, Moose, because we never make a mistake. <laughs> never. See you in hour two. We'll see you in hour two. You bet. My favorite Italian in the band city is coming up next. We are live on the Game Plus television network, Key Radio, WQEE. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new Halo mounting system. <laughs> if it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. The race for the Cantera Seeds Cup continues on Flow Hockey TV. SJHL playoffs are on. 60 minutes and who wants it more? Follow the race for the Cantera Seeds Cup on Flow Hockey TV. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner with special guest Headpins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. The live sports experience is changing. Teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG. Always delivering the best fan experience. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. 
Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. RP Show continues. Episode 1225. 1,225 of the RP Show is at hand, and it is the best time of year. Hockey playoffs. As we mentioned before the break, Jagger Furkus scored twice in a run of four unanswered goals from the Moose Jaw Warriors. In a 5-2 triumph over the Swift Current Broncos are now a win away from advancing to the Eastern Conference Final. James Gallo called it, and he joins us. We're going to talk a lot of junior hockey here the rest of the spring because this is the best time. How you doing, James? Excited? Yeah, I mean, uh, late nights, early mornings, but it's great. I mean, it's it's kind of what you want right now. Some exciting hockey uh, in our second round series, so it's, it's been fun so far. Yeah, no kidding. And uh, well, I understand you do have some hockey weather there. Probably doesn't feel like spring <laughs> yet. But uh, uh, what's the town going through in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, getting ready for an elimination game Friday? It's Friday night, I assume, in the Rempel Temple. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, starting back, I think, in the first round against the Brandon Wheat Kings, there was a good buzz. And then when you get to the second round and you play a rival like the Swift Curve Broncos, it it just got amplified, I think, even more. Um, you know, it's it's standing room only. I think that's even sold out, as a matter of fact, a couple of days ago. Um, the, the community's buzzing. And I think, you know, didn't really, let's be honest, I mean, going to Swift Curve and Steel 2 on a midweek, uh, Rod, you know how hostile that that environment can be. It's great. In Swift Current and playoff hockey, and for the Warriors to do that, um, you know, I haven't been out in the community yet today, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of people smiling ear to ear, and uh, they're, they're they're buzzing. This community's ready to roll, and they're really anxious for Game Five on Friday night. Dude, this is no small thing, and I'll get to the big focus for a second. But the smaller focus is this: you mentioned hard to win in Swift. They're a hard team to close out, too, to, to nail the coffin door on. <laughs> what is Coach Mark O'Leary saying about that? You know, I think the one thing talking to this team throughout the course of the playoffs, it's been it's been resetting and refocusing after game. Uh, you know, it's in the regular season, momentum can go game to game. But right now, the Moose Jaw Warriors just going with the philosophy of momentum right now is shift to shift. And they can't get caught in the highs and they can't get too down on the lows and how this team has been able to manage their emotions I think has been one thing that's been impressive and you know the, the elimination game is the hardest one to win you will see I thought we saw the Broncos at their best in, in game three because that's the pivotal or sorry in game four that's the pivotal game um, I thought we saw the Royal Broncos at their best but now in game five you're going to see them at their best and you're going to see them probably at their most desperate and that's for 60 minutes so I think Moose Jaw really needs to weather the storm. I think just to be calm, you got to lean on your leaders, right? Lean on the core, the, the guys that got you here, and uh, hopefully execute properly, and, uh, and hopefully things can come out well for Moose Jaw. Canadian sports fans and viewers will know this, or American ones won't, so we'll, we'll learn them, James. Um, there are teams in this league from Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, millions. These in the Elite Eight, Final Eight, Moose Jaw, 35,000 people. Swift Current, 17,000 people. Pretty amazing they're still standing. What's the secret, do you think? Not only that, Rod, but uh, they are just two of four community-owned teams in the Western Hockey League, which I think to, to have two community-owned teams inside the Elite Eight in the Western Hockey League is pretty impressive. I mean, they are the lifebloods of their community from, let's say, September to whenever their seasons are done. Uh, the rinks are always packed. The, the fans are, are always wanting to talk about their teams throughout the course of the year. And, you know, they mean a lot. And being community-owned, uh, the dollars and cents 
mean a lot as well. Uh, you know, when you when you're playing against teams that have some teams have unlimited budgets. Let's let's call a spade a spade. That's not the case with Moose Jaw and Swift Current. And, and what these teams do business wise, I think, is is tremendous to keep their organizations rolling and, and on the ice. How they're able to compete and more importantly provide an exceptional player environment is, is probably the most important thing. And I think both Swift Current and Moose Jaw do a fantastic job in that category. Not to put the cart ahead of the horse too much, but when is the last time the Warriors got to the East Final? I'm getting old. Was it 0406? Which, how long has uh, it been? No, last, last time was 2011-2012, uh, was uh, Eastern Conference Final okay. against the Edmonton Oil Kings. Um, you know, lost that one in five games. That was uh, the first year of our brand-new facility. Uh, for fans outside of Moose Jaw, that was the year that Morgan Riley was draft eligible, came back for games three and four after sustaining a pretty long injury in, in that season. So it's been a while. And of course, you know, I know Darren before the break was talking about how you know, the Saskatoon Blades had never won a, a league title, but neither have the Moose Jaw Warriors and they've been around for 40 years, this being the 40th season. So uh, it, it, this is a hungry squad and they're not looking past the Swift Current Broncos because Friday is going to be a battle. It, it is yeah. going to be a battle and the Warriors are just focused on the Swift Current Broncos. but. Right from day one and throughout the course of the regular season, you, you could see the determination, you know, in the players' eyes to try and give this community something that they've never experienced, and that's a championship season. It's a fantastic community. Listen, I don't know when I'm going to talk to you again, although I know I'll see you this summer, but what led to them banning beating on the broadcast booth in Swift? You have to tell me. I saw the <laughs> sign. It's been 17 years too late. And have they enforced it? The fans beat on the broadcast <laughs> booth there, everybody. It's highly unnerving and it should be illegal. You know, it, it, it makes Swift Current unique. And actually, so Rod, we were there on Family Day Monday in February. It was the first game of a 14-day 14 14 road trip for Moose Jaw. And uh, we left. The Broncos beat Moose Jaw that day. And then we, we continued on our trip out west. And, you know, probably about two or three days later, I saw the signs. And I thought first myself, I'm like, oh, no, do they think that I complained? And no chance has that been the case because, uh, I, you know, after 24 years, I'm used to it. But I was joking around with the Broncos radio guy. I said, if you put the signs there, you can answer to the fans because it's too tall for me to reach. I'm a short guy, so I, I, can't, I can't reach to put those signs up. But there's zero chance. The sign underneath the home booth is still there, but the sign underneath the visitor booth, I think that was long gone months ago. So they're still beating on the booth? They're, they're still beating on the booth. Um, I don't have the nerve to, uh, to respond how other broadcasters have responded in the past. I'm sure, Rod, you've got a great story about that. But uh, I don't have the nerve to do that one. But, uh, you know, the Bronco fans, it's just part of the atmosphere. It, if people want to experience, I think, a junior hockey playoff game in, in a great environment, go to Swift Current. Swift Current, Prince Albert, they're unique. And, and in the playoffs, that they're madhouses. They're, they're, they're fantastic to be a part of. Well, unique is one word for it. Um, I don't know that it comes down to nerve, James, but the very first game I called in that rink was in 1993. They started, it was a preseason game. I thought the thing was coming down <laughs> for legitimate safety concerns. It's pretty rickety. One day, you wait, man. When that thing comes down, you'll go, Rod was right. They should have listened to him. That's, and by the way, tampering with a broadcast is a federal offense uh, against CRTC that? regulations. So <laughs> listen, I, uh, I researched this stuff. For your sake, brother, I hope you're not going back there this year. Good luck <laughs> Friday night. Uh, anything you would like our viewers and fans to hear before I let you go? Uh, you know what? I think I uh, just appreciate the coverage, right? I mean, I think uh, it's great to get, you know, news about the Moose Jaw Warriors, the Swift Current Broncos, the Western Hockey League. Um, you know, it's an exciting time of year, and, and everybody's into it, right? Sp uh, spring and fall, Rods, are the best times. Fall, you got, you know, hockey returning and baseball playoffs, and in the spring, you got hockey playoffs and baseball's back. So these are my two most exciting times of the year, and everybody's along for the ride right now, and it's been fun. Go get them, JG. Thanks for the time. Anytime. Appreciate the call there, Rod. James Gallo, the voice of the Moose Jaw Warriors. We'll be right back with a sports update and audience takeover, and we got some gooders here. We are live on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
The live sports experience is changing. Teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. I'm Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist, and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. One of hip hop's finest, Ice Cube. You better check yourself or you wreck yourself, cause I'm back. Straight into Canada tour. April 28th, Moose Jaw Event Center. I can't believe today was a good day. Among the most influential rappers of all time, Ice Cube. On sale now at sasktix.ca or the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. Okay, here we go. We are back in it to win it. Um, I'll get to the viewer comment first. Viewers comments first. This from El Sasco. And before I go any further, why did you change your name from Fake Gainer? I, that was a lot easier to remember for me. He's written it on the Text line 902-518-3033 for Silver Carpenter, non-alcoholic craft beers. Ask for them by name at your favorite beer, wine, and spirit store. Uh, El Sasco writes in and says, Solid show. I know it's not a food show, but can you at least name one item you had at Appy's last night? I won't talk about food for a week after this. Signed, Vintage Sasco, ready for lunch. Uh, it's actually not hard. We order the same thing every week. 50% off appetizers at the Yard House. I get chicken tenders tossed in Korean chili sauce. It's, it's like pretty much identical to Hooters Daytona wing sauce, but they call it Korean chili sauce. And fries, Serena always gets chicken tenders tossed in buffalo sauce. Replace the fries with Caesar salad. 
and then uh, and then she got Brussels sprouts last night, steamed and seasoned. I had a couple more for her. Same thing. And I'm going back to the yard house tonight with my gang. Other guys love me some yard house. Kirk in Toronto writes in. Thank you, Kirk. He has pointed out Blue Jays dropped 10,000 seats to complete the new renovations. Stadium looks great. I agree. The stadium does look great. It looks better when the team looks great. And they've looked pretty great since they've been home after that season opening 10 game road trip, right? Where they went four and six. We're very closely watching the Blue Jays, not inning by inning by inning, but certainly following the results on a daily basis. And the stadium does look good. Looks like they're going to be in there for a while. And I'll tell you a story. 1999, my first season calling Rough Riders football, we played the Argonauts in Skydome. And I made a thermos of coffee, and I went through that whole place on the day of the game. Every nook and cranny. Huge sports fan that I was. And uh, I guess it's not the same now, huh? With the Renos, but that's, I would hate to see Rogers Center go. Sports update. Ter uh, breaking news today from the Canadian Elite Basketball League. Terrell Vernon will be the next head coach of the Calgary Surge, the team announced today. Vernon just wrapped up his third season as head coach of the St. Francis Xavier men's basketball team. The Hamilton, Ontario product is no stranger to the CEBL. He serves as an assistant coach for the Scarborough Shooting Stars the past two seasons. Can somebody please tell me what happened to the Surge's coach from last year, their inaugural year? He took him all the way to the league final. Where'd he go? Can't remember his name, but clearly he did a good job. These days, it doesn't matter if you do a good job, folks. You can still be fired. Welcome to sport. The final day of the NHL regular season is here. The Vancouver Canucks will take on the Jets in Winnipeg. The Edmonton Oilers will be in Colorado. Elsewhere, the Flames close their season hosting the lowly San Jose Sharks. The Professional Women's Hockey League is back in action tonight with the international break concluded. Toronto opens a three-game April road trip with a matchup against Boston. Meanwhile, Montreal hosts Minnesota. Sports updates for Common Crown Brewing Company, turning your everyday common beer into a unique and exceptional experience. Visit commoncrown.ca. And for Landmark Cinemas and Landmark Cinemas Now, Civil War, starring Kirsten Dunst and Wagner Mora. Civil War is a journey across a dystopian future America following a team of military embedded journalists as they race against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. Ooh, Civil War in Landmark Cinemas now. Okay, Buffalo Bill, I'll read it. And then chill on the comments. He says, what a salty topic today from mullet hair to Salt Lake City. Approved. Approved. We'll spend more time on, spend more time on Arizona next hour if you want. Uh, the outpouring of emotion and heartbrokenness from last night in their last game is just appropriate, just enough. I feel like there shouldn't be any more today and moving forward, but that's just me. Maybe you feel differently. We've got Jersey Jim coming up next hour and Breakaway Bets, tonight's NHL game. So stick around. We'll be right back after this. capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. 
Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. The race for the Cantera Seed Cup continues on Flow Hockey TV. SJHL playoffs are on. 60 minutes and who wants it more? Follow the race for the Cantera Seeds Cup on Flow Hockey TV. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. The live sports experience is changing. Teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. Up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. <laughs> Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Breaking news out of the NBA. It has banned Toronto Raptors two-way player Jonte Porter for life. The league said another individual known to be an NBA better placed an $80,000 bet that Porter would not hit the number set for him in parlays through an online sports book. That bet would have won $1.1 million. And they're not fooling around with this. They say, if you're doing wrong, we're going to find you. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the RP Show. It's hour two. I know this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to get spicy. We say that every day, but today we really mean it. We really do. It's episode number 1,225 here. Rocking and rolling our way into your living rooms if you're watching on Game Plus TV. Your sports bars. A lot of people do that. On the radio, WQEE 99.1 FM. And the streams. Let's bring in the moose. I feel like we're going to try to get back on topic as much as we can. I do need to throw this in for the benefit of those that have just tuned in. What did we cover? Last night's NHL games, Austin Matthews getting stuck on 69 goals, not hitting 70 in a 6-4 Leafs loss at Tampa. But Nikita Kucherov did hit, did hit 100 assists. No player had done it in 30 years, scored 100 assists. Now we have two in a week. Connor McDavid and Nikita Kucherov. Unbelievable. Um, the Arizona Coyotes, we've spent a lot of time on, and we will spend more time on them here. Talked about the Miami Heat losing last night at the 76ers, but they still have a chance if they beat the Bulls here on Friday, but they got to do it without Jimmy Butler. And here's a theme for this hour, Darren. And you can play along, too, if you want. They feel, what I'm hearing this morning here in South Florida is that the Heat don't have a chance without Jimmy Butler. They can't win. And I said, Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup without Steven Stamkos. Missed pretty much the entire playoffs because of a broken leg. And I remember that because he came out when they presented the cup. Remember, on his broken leg, he didn't play. Now I get people are going to go, basketball is different than hockey, Rod. That part I'll give you, and I don't know. 
you know that one player could have a far bigger impact in basketball than he would in hockey? But it's one game. It's not a best of seven series. My point is, can you remember any other example? Maybe it's your teams, although you're a Leaf fan, so they never won the Stanley Cup in your lifetime. But you know my point. That overcame an injury to win a championship. Whether it's one game, like a Super Bowl, or a best of seven series, baseball. Stamkos, that immediately popped into my mind. Yeah. Can, can you think of any? That's the big one for me, is, is Steven Stamkos. Um, I'm trying to think of others. It, it's, it's not often. Um, no, that's the one that stands out. I'm trying to think of football instances. I mean, it's not the same. You could look at the, uh, you could look at the CFL when, when McLeod Bethel Thompson went down and Chad Kelly. That was in the middle of a game. But that's different. That wasn't like this where you got to engineer an entire game and everything changes or, you know, finish off a season. That was just in the middle of a game. Lots of instances of backups coming in and finishing off wins. Hey, but yeah, we got an, got an hour for you to think about it. And I apologize. It just popped into my head. You know me, same as you, or I would have, trust me, I would have prepped you a little more. Uh, but 2007 Grey Cup, I would say this as the rider guy that I was, Wes Cates are running our star tailback from Columbus, Ohio. V. Wes Cates played on a broken foot. I think we all know that. Somebody wrote a best-selling book about that. Uh, Oh, it was me. And Wes said he didn't. I said, I I remember interviewing the day before the game on the field at Rogers Center. Funny how everything's pulling together here. It might have been Skydome at the time. I can't remember the name of it. But I said, Wes, how do you feel about playing on a broken foot in the Grey Cup tomorrow? He goes, I don't care. I'll sling it over my shoulder if I have to. I'm not missing this game. And, of course, they shot it up with Novocaine or whatever they do. And he, he had a great game, and we won. And Bob's your uncle. Bob's I wanted uncle. to throw this in. Last hour, we had James Gallo, the voice of the Moose Jaw Warriors, with us, talking about their first, second-round WHL playoff series against Swift Current. Paul in Humboldt has written in. And says, do the Moose Jaw Warriors still have a cheerleader in face paint and a headdress beating on a drum? I remember seeing him at the crush camp. I feel like that wouldn't fly in a lot of places in 2024. Jen from the Four Seasons writes in and says, he's still there, Paul. So, yeah. I'm just throwing out, I can't, I don't even know what the mascot's name is. I can't, I can't believe it's still going on. Brent in Wellington, Florida says basketball has a lot shorter bench than hockey. Probably, yeah, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying, so why play the game then? Why play the, I know Jimmy Butler's your best player. I, him and Bam at a bio. Like I'm literally just getting into the NBA here. And I'll, maybe, that, maybe it's me. Maybe I jinx them. But I'll tell you, Darren, when you come down here, I hope we can time it right to go. You saw my photos last week. That Miami Heat Boulevard where the Heat play is right on the bridge, the port of Miami, where all the cruise ships come in. Just to take us off ramp to Cuckoo Town. Have you ever taken a cruise or do you want to take a cruise? Never taken a cruise. Um... I'm, I'm hit or miss on it, you know, take it or leave it. It's probably one of those things. Look, I was, I was hit or miss on take it or leave it on going to the desert. That's Scottsdale and Palm Springs until I went. And I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like this. No, seriously. I've always been like a snowboard skiing guy. I want to go to the mountains and the ocean. I'm like, why would I want to go to the desert until you go? And I'm like, this is great. This is great. I don't like want to go anywhere else. Unbelievable. You know, (laughs) I'd probably be the same on a cruise. Um, sorry, I'm reading the comments here. I, I, my, my, before there was Wi-Fi and satellite technology, there's no way you'd have got me on a cruise. And I started to think, okay, so I can check my messages and surf Twitter, maybe. But the other night when I went to the Heat game, I had three hours to kill before the game. So I was just sitting on the port of Miami watching these cruise ships go in and out. And there was this one Virgin Cruise Lines. The guy did a freaking, he turned on a dime right in the port. A cruise ship. I'm like, come on. Just to sit and watch this was unbelievable. And they were leaving to go out to the ocean. But 
however many people, let's say there's a thousand people on there. From as far away as I was, I could hear bouncing off the water the music on this thing. Unza, 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 unza. <clears throat> nope. Nope. And I can speak for Serena too. Nope. I, I can't would, get off this I thing. Would, no. I would also rather take massive turbulence in an airplane than massive turbulence on the water, like big waves in a storm. I'd much rather be in an airplane that's shaking and dropping, you know, thousands of feet at a time than I would rather be on a rough ocean. Yeah, I don't have any problems with planes at all. None. But a cruise ship, I would feel totally, I can't get off this thing. Yeah. So no interest in cruises here. Was, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Um, back to... Hey, 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 hey. Trying to keep my mind together. The bitchers have come out into full force here. An example of a player playing injured in a big playoff game or championship game. John Ohm has rallied. I feel like Google helped him, Dr. Google, but Ohm. Philip Rivers played the 2007 AFC championship game against the Patriots with a torn ACL. Let me have an addendum to this. And won. Your team played with or without that injured player, and they won. Ryan in Saratoga, New York. Joe Neuendijk missed the Stanley Cup final in 2003. Mike Rupp wound up in his spot. Rupper scored the cup clinching goal in game seven. There's an example of teams coming together, right, in the absence of a star. And that's what the Heat are going to have to do here on Friday night. Why? <laughs> Talking NBA. Whoa. What? That's like your third reference this? to the Heat game on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's what's in this drink? Please turn yeah. that into another what? gift because that's outstanding. <laughs> oh, what? <no. laughs> what? You sniffing the glass? Slapping myself? Oh, uh, well, that yeah. too. What's in this? That too. Okay, but this, because this annoyed me a little bit. Vince, I got to think, is in Winnipeg, is written in. Vince says, Jets home games, 9 p.m. Ack, the outside the province TV audience wins again. Vince, sit down. Sit, sit. Calgary Flames fans would give an appendage to have their team play 9 p.m. playoff games, okay? They're riddled with anxiety all year long, these sports fans, up and down like a toilet seat. And then you get in, and you got a great team, and now you don't like the start times. I get it. I get it, Vince. But it's like here. I won't name him, but he might be watching right now. Complaining here in Florida that the Panthers and Lightning are playing 130 on Sunday. <laughs> Can I say this? I don't want to get in trouble for it, but Serena was talking to Dale Talon the other night, the general manager, former general manager of the Panthers in the Blackhawks, and he... It's 111 Eastern, by the way. I'm just interrupting my story to point that out. If you're big into numerology at all, it's 111 Eastern. Beautiful. He said he hoped that there wouldn't be a game on Sunday because he's got to go to church. And if you know Dale Talon at all, it's unlikely that he's going to church. I wouldn't think. But the other people around him in the press box, I guess, because Serena was relaying the story, said, well, Dale, church is in the morning. I'm pretty sure the game won't be in the morning. And he goes, oh, no, but I pray all day. He's, <laughs> God, I wish I was there to hear that. How about he's that? Something else. Utah Darren says, uh, the TV, TV audience wins every time. Vince says, I'm already sitting. LOL. Here's the thing with these start times. I, I get that you don't hear me complain a lot, man. You don't. I would just go to bed. Now, if it was my team, how bad do you want to watch them? How bad do you want to watch them? If it is your team, you would stay up all night. You, they, you were playing at 2 in the morning, you'd watch. Ah, clearly I've hit on something. I can tell by your reaction. Well, it's just, you know, I get it, but we need to look outside of our own selves. You know, the TV audience does win. 
It's where the money comes from. You know, I was once with a team. There was 10 of us. It wasn't a sports team, but it was with a team of people. And we were trying to organize a team dinner. 10 of us. And everybody had something, a different job to do that was at different times. And we set the dinner. 8 p.m., here's where we're going. And one person pipes up, well, I'm not done till 9. Can we, we got to change the dinner. Well, eight of us are done. And there is no time that works for everybody. Like, there is no time that works perfectly for everybody. But this works for eight out of 10. It's the best we could do. So we're going to do it here. You know what I mean? You got to, you know, oh my. it's not all going to revolve around you. We're in an age where it's getting worse, the bitching. I feel like that's why I've been given this platform and this role to tell people to stop bitching. Allie in Texarkana uh, writes in and she says, you can't gripe about playoff start time. <laughs> I agree. Um, Vince says, by the way, it's okay. It just seems to take a bit away from the home advantage for the players. Fair enough, but I feel like if you ask the players about the start times, they're not going to care. I mean, number one, when I was the voice of a team, hockey and football, I did not care when the start times were at all. Didn't even think about it in my role. That's the broadcaster I'm not playing, but you get it. And then the other thing was with the Rough Riders, the team, after listening to everybody bitch from every, every demographic, every section of society, they settled on 5 o'clock Saturday afternoon was the best time to play. People can come from outside the city. Gives you time to get home at night. It's on the weekend. It's a perfect time, 5 o'clock Saturday, for football, pro football. But then I owned a restaurant. It was actually pretty good for us at the restaurant, no doubt. But all the retail sector. Ah, oh, what? They're killing the retail sector. Nobody's shopping on a Saturday afternoon. The team's playing. Blah, blah, blah. What do you want? What? What you just said. You aren't going to please everybody. 9 p.m.'s a little egregious. Sure. sure. But I'll tell you, Flames fans, Senators fans, they'd all be very happy to be playing 9 p.m. games. That's all. Oh. Are we moving on? Yeah, I think we have to. Like, I mean, the last thought I had on this is the marquee teams, the marquee billing gets the prime time slot. You know, there's going to be Saturday games where they have three, four games. Someone's going to play, no doubt, at 11 a.m. on a weekend. It's going to happen in the playoffs. And, you know, it's the same as when I go watch a tennis event. Rafael, you know, Nadal, Federer, they play at 7 o'clock. If I want to watch the Canadian, I got to watch him at midnight or I got to watch him at like 11 in the morning. It's just, it's just life. Bro, this is the biggest Jedi mind screw of all time. Trying to get your head around this when I say this. It's not all going to work for everybody. Ali has pointed that out too, as have you. But also, do what's best for you. I went to all these Panthers watch parties last year, and I was with my guy Thad the other day. We were talking about the one that went to quintuple, if that's a word, quintuple, quintuple, overtime. Remember that? Panthers and the Hurricanes. And I think I might have stayed at that watch party at the backyard for one overtime, maybe one. And everybody was like, where you go? Where you go? Where you go? I don't care enough. I'm going to bed. And I ended up going till 2 a.m. Yeah. So, so the next day, oh, you're smart. You were, sm you were smart. Thank you. If you care, because who wasn't here? Jen says, I'll never forget the oil. And I believe Dallas went into triple overtime. It was like 1.30 a.m. the morning when that game ended. Yeah, I was watching it too. Because I was the Stars fan cheering for my dad's team. So again... How bad do you want to watch? Two TED Talks in one segment. No charge. We'll be back in a moment. Jersey Jim is on the way. And we haven't even talked about Arizona yet. And tonight's breakaway picks coming up too. We're live on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Raj Peterson. <laughs> We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. The live sports experience is changing. Teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. The race for the Cantera Seats Cup continues on Flow Hockey TV. SJHL playoffs are on. 60 minutes and who wants it more? Follow the race for the Cantera Seeds Cup on Flow Hockey TV. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Hi, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us through the break. And those wonderful commercials that keep us on the air. And our fantastic sponsors, including Common Crown Breweries out of Calgary. They know that the best beer is the one that's earned. And also, by the way, the Sober Carpenter text line's open, 902-518-3033. That's non-alcoholic craft beers, if that's your thing, like mine. And you can get them at your local uh, beer, wine, and spirit store. Landmark Cinemas as well. Please bring in the moose. Uh, you are not on your phone, are you, moose? Uh, a what are you using? Just got a text, yeah. Why am I not on my phone? <laughs> you got it? That's why I was going to say, you get it? Did you get the text? I w yes. I wanted to see your reaction. So on camera, you I, opened it before. I'm, yeah. So I'm not on my you phone. I'm not on my phone because I, you know, I use my, my phone as my web, my camera, right? I use my phone as my webcam on this. But I now have, this is when it's good to have your messages come in on your computer. So I get the notification that I've been yeah. sent an image and none of my contacts show up. So I'm trying to decipher phone numbers and I just, I only saw it enough just coming to air and I'm trying to stay composed, trying to stay composed. Do we tell people to go check Twitter? I don't know. I'll, I'll handle it. It was Antonio Brown's latest tweet. I sent it to Darren just before we went to the air. That's all I'll say. And I mean, it's so outrageously inappropriate. And yet when there's idiots like us giving him a platform or reacting to his post, who's the idiots? Who's the idiots? Antonio Brown's latest post, that's all I'll say. Um, you know, this is fun. To, I'm here for this discussion right now. Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah. There's two series that are left. 
Clark and I are trying to sort this out before the show. Two series that have not been decided. We know it's Vancouver, Nashville. We know it's Colorado, Winnipeg. But we don't know who Dallas doesn't know who they're playing at Edmonton doesn't know. Is that right, Clark? Is everybody? Is that right? The Eastern series are all nailed down. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. We think so. Not only has this been the best end of a regular season in the NHL history, it might potentially be the most confusing end to the history in the National Hockey League, too. But there are some people complaining in Winnipeg about the 9 p.m. start times. Jason in Winnipeg writes in, because we're very big in Winnipeg. I don't get it either. I just appreciate them for it. Jason says, I don't like the 9 p.m. start, but we are in the West Coast, so what do you expect? They want wall-to-wall -wall coverage starting at 7 p.m. Toronto time. Maybe. I think it's, you're the second game of a doubleheader. It's, you're only an hour behind the East. It's not right. It's not right. Just to make that clear, you legitimately have a beef to be upset. However, if you have to take this or not being in the playoffs, I would take this. That's all that I'm saying. That's all that I'm saying. Any more, Moose, before I read a few more texts? Yeah, I would take that too. And, you know, again, they're trying to do what's best to get the most people watching on TV and to get every building full. That combination across the entire league. And hopefully um, this is going to do that. It, it help. I mean, it's not, Utah, gonna, Darren, it's not great for everybody. Yeah. Well, a couple things. Let me just say this. With the article that came out the other day, we published it at rodpeterson.com, and some of the Panthers people thought I wrote it. I didn't. It was an Associated Press article, but I'll take the credit. I did post it from my website. The NHL is going to think that everything they do is golden now. You know that, right? You know that ratings are up, attendance is up, jersey sales, everything's up, which, by the way, I'm okay with. But don't come at them saying anything they do is wrong because <laughs> they've got... See, see, they've got data now to back up that they know what they're doing. That's all that I'm going to say. Yeah. Right? I know. Utah, and, Darren. And there's going to be new, new things that came out this year, and somebody was, well, see, there was a great idea. It's a great idea to do that thing that I suggested we do. Look at the ratings. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I can't say anymore. No, Rod. Utah, no, Rod. Darren's it wasn't your thing. It was my idea that the ratings, you know, there'll be that too. Well, you're, there's going to be a lot of that. But Utah Darren says uh, 8 p.m. kickoffs for Mountain Time Zone college football games are standard now. I mean, 8 p.m.'s pretty late too. <laughs> uh, from John, producer John, he says, am I missing something here? Do people not know how to PVR a game? P.S. Moose, if you want, I can give you the number of Godzilla's stylus if you're, if you're interested. Uh, do you know producer John Glowa, by the way? Because his stuff is infinitely funnier if you know him. Do you know him? Very little. Just a little bit. But I don't uh, really know him, no. Uh, he, he, do, would you know him to see him? Yeah. Okay, that's all you need. Producer, we both survived working at Harvard Broadcast. We survived, John. How about that? I think that's the lesson here today. We survived. And you don't PVR a game, so get out of here with that. John, you lost all credibility by saying that. You're not PVRing a game. Darren does, but save. What are you missing a game for? If you can't stay up at nine for your team, then you literally are not a fan. What are you PVR games for? You've PVR'd it, if I may, because you were working and doing something else, right? Yeah, or I've got a commitment I can't get out of. But I'm not PVRing a 9 p.m. game because I'm going to sleep. I'm not PVRing a 9 p.m. game to watch it the next day. I'm PVRing a 9 p.m. game because I've got an event and I'm watching that game at midnight. Right? That's why I'm PVRing a 9 o'clock game, not to watch it the next day. Randy in Winnipeg says, I never PVR games. Watch real time or nothing. I agree. Ali says in Texarkana, I remember the bubble year. There was some weird game times, LOL, like in the middle of the day. Remember, 
I remember dragging my, I was watching on my iPad. I remember dragging it out into the backyard. They started at 11 a.m. and they went till 11 p.m. And I watched the whole bloody day. It wasn't just my team. It was every team. There was a little bit of, I didn't know if we were ever going to have hockey again. My God, there was COVID going around. I thought the earth was going to burn to death and we would never have hockey again. So I really appreciated hockey. And I watched it every day, the whole day for 12 hours. I was thinking about this too, by the way. PBR is one thing, but how about this? Watching a sporting event while you're at another. I see it a lot here, way more here than in Canada. But I do get a little annoyed when I'm in the press box. This is a me thing. It's not an anybody else thing, but it's when they're watching college football, college basketball, something else, maybe a Marlins game, and you're there covering the game. It kind of annoys me. But in my mind, I thought, that voice says, well, Rod, you've done it. And I'm like, yeah, one time, one time. It was the 2018 CFL preseason. I'm calling a game in Edmonton at Commonwealth Stadium, and the Regina Pats were in the Memorial Cup final against Acadie Bathurst. I think I can be forgiven when your team's in the national championship, for God's sake. I did it one time which we lost 3 nothing. <clears throat> Anyways. Any thoughts before I move on? No, it's just, you know, again, watch the games the way you want to watch them, the way you want to follow your team. But I, I don't know yeah. how you can go to sleep uh, not knowing how your team did and not staying up to watch the game. I, that one I don't get. Uh, that's, Ali brings up, or uh, Jen, a lot of female viewers today. Uh, about that Dallas Edmonton game. I don't remember the year. Serena would remember it. She might be listening right now, or she might be working. I'm not sure, but I remember. I stayed up the whole. Was that the uh... Todd Marchant goal? Todd that was Marchand. the one where Cujo robbed Newendike at one end, and Marchant comes the other way and beats Andy Moog. Yeah. I was with Scruffy at Tumblr's. I was so, I was so mad. I slammed down my Diet Coke and stormed out without even saying anything to Scruffy, and he laughed his balls off. Uh, okay. Producer John says, "Should I stop watching the replay of your show if I miss it?" Producer John, this is what I'll say: You do you, but you might miss something. Let's do breakaway bets before we go any further. This is going to be very difficult on the final night of the regular season. If I use my friend's concept of who wants it more, it shouldn't be that, or who has more to play for, that might help here. So last night, Darren, I don't know if we're going to play this again, if that means anything. Seattle at Minnesota. Who wins? Seattle. Oh, perfect, because I think it'll be Minnesota. Uh, it's at home. They want to leave their fans with a good taste in their mouth, and John Hines coaching there right now, is he not? He wants to put his best step forward to be kept for next year. Minnesota wins. Win it for Hine. Vancouver at Winnipeg. Um, I'll go what do you think? Oh, Winnipeg. Perfect. I'll go Vancouver because they're going to want to get Thatcher Demko some reps. If he's starting, I don't know. I would start him because he hasn't played in a long time or he missed, had a, the big gap. San Jose at Calgary. Who wins? I think, oh, boy. <laughs> it's all hard. I'm going to go with the Sharks to win and end a really bad season on a high note. You know what? I will, too. That would be the ultimate plot twist. Edmonton at Colorado in a game that nobody cares about. Who wins? I think Colorado will win. Uh, I don't really know what Ooh. lineups to expect, but I'll pick Colorado tonight. I'm going to take Edmonton because they, they didn't throw it in Arizona last night. Don't put it out that I'm saying that I'm saying they threw it, but they didn't try very hard. And you can't have two of those going into the playoffs. So the orders will try tonight in Colorado. Anaheim at Vegas. What say you? Anaheim. Anaheim. Me too. 
for all the reasons the other crappy teams will win tonight, basically, right? And Chicago yeah. at the LA Kings. Same reason. Let's take Chicago, too. I think, you know, again, you're selling hope. You're selling hope in Chicago. Okay. Yeah, the Kings don't care. Uh, good. On the Arizona thing, um, before I let you go, Jersey Jim's coming in next. The poll question, do you think the NHL will return to Arizona? I say no. That's our poll. Last I checked, 69% of respondents saying no. Darren's saying yes. Do you actually believe that, or are you just trying to be spicy? No, I believe it. I believe it. Um, again, I, I think that if we, if we know anything from the NHL, they're very long takes a long time to close a door and they don't really want to close the door on places that they want to be. So is it happening now? No, they're leaving. Um, will Morello get it done in five years? I don't know, but I think the NHL in the back of their mind still wants this market to work with the right people in the right situation. So I think they'll come back. I just don't know when. By the time it comes back, Batman will be retired. So we have, have a whole new agenda then. But I get what you're saying. A lot of hockey players come from there. Kachuk, Tage Thompson, Matthew Nyes, uh, Austin Matthews, obviously. Yeah. But a lot of hockey players come from Regina, and they're not racing to put a team there. So, Okay, Moose, enjoy okay. the hockey. Great job. You bet. Thank you. Jersey Jim is in next. We are live on the Game Plus TV network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The live sports experience is changing. Teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. Text 902-518-3033 Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson Text 902-518-3033 Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. I'm Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist, and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match. But for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. One of hip hop's finest, Ice Cube. You better check yourself or you wreck yourself, cause I'm back. Straight into Canada tour. April 28th, Moose Jaw Event Center. I can't believe today was a good day. Among the most influential rappers of all time, Ice Cube. On sale now at sasptix.ca or the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. Hi, my name is Logan Stankoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB.
business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Oh, yeah. He's back. Time for more of The Rod Peterson Show. Hey, the old RP show continues on a Thursday, final night of the Stanley Cup regular, the NHL regular season Stanley Cup playoffs get going on the weekend. 1.30 here, game one of the Battle of Florida. Panthers and Tampa Bay Lightning getting after it. We're heading to Jersey now. Jersey Jim covers all the teams in the tri-state area there and more. But he's a, I think he's a devil's guy from what I see. What's up, G yeah, <laughs> What's I'm a up devil's Jersey guy. Jim? Yeah. What's going on, Rod? How we doing, buddy? Hey, dude, I don't want to start in a downer, but let's start down and then go up because producer Clark said this morning, Jersey Jim's got to have a take on this wild season of the Devils. Nobody really saw this coming. A coach firing. What is your take on how the bottom fell out of this team? You know, I think a lot of things here. I mean, back in the summer, right before the season started, I was on the show. They said we needed a number one goalie. They needed a number one goaltender. They didn't get it. They didn't get the saves. To me, a lot of reactionary moves, not too many proactive moves. You saw it around Edmonton, St. Louis, Minnesota. Even with the Islanders, you make that coaching change. Maybe before you do, maybe you have a chance because the way the wild and wacky Eastern Conference played out, if they could have strung four, five, six, seven, eight games together, maybe they're in the playoffs. But they didn't deserve to be there. Disappointing season. Tom Fitzgerald was speaking earlier. He even said it. Not good enough. Very accountable. Does 112 points happen again? No, but the standard should be playoffs every year. And injuries, all that aside, this team just didn't play well in its own zone. And that's what it comes down to. Defensive breakdowns and not playing the right way every night consistently. Jersey Jim with us from Full Press NHL. Before we do move on, what was your take on the Markstrom deal that fell through? I've heard the Calgary side. I'd love to know what yours is. Look, from what I heard, the deal was in place. Uh, they were going to get it done, and somewhere along the way, something got crossed. Nobody wanted to do it. It was at the finish line. From my understanding, it was brought to Markstrom. Markstrom said yes. Markstrom said, cool, I'm with New Jersey, and it appeared like that was his mindset. He was going, and that's all anybody talked about when Calgary was here. Oh, well, how come Markstrom didn't get traded, or why didn't this happen, or can we see it coming? But again, I think there was something in ownership that felt that the Flames were right there, or the Devils wanted more. I think the deal was there, but again, when it gets across the finish line and people that aren't involved get involved that's when things blow up so i'm gonna that's where i'm gonna stand on this thing but from my understanding jacob markstrom was coming to new jersey the devils wanted him flames backed out that's what i heard that's what you heard mm -hmm. that's what i heard exactly devils yeah. wanted him devils still want him uh and markstrom had the mindset that he was coming to new jersey and you could see it when he was talking to the media Okay, brother, moving on. Islanders are in, they're facing Carolina. Rangers are obviously in, they're facing the Caps. I mentioned the Battle of Florida. And then there's Leafs Bruins. Uh, do, you, do you see an upset? There's always one upset. Who do you think it'll be? I mean, I, I don't want to be, like, negative on, you know, guys down in Florida right now, but... Uh, Tampa Bay is the hottest team or one of the hottest teams going into the Stanley Cup playoffs. And history has shown in the playoffs that they can beat Florida. That would be a team I would have on upset alert just because of what Kucherov, what Point, what Stamkos, and Vasilevsky are doing. I'm not taking away anything the Florida Panthers have done. But, you know, they, they can win the series. But to me, that's a team that should be on upset alert. Uh, heading in just because of the playoff history, because we know what Tampa can do in the playoffs. I don't see upset alert for Boston. I mean, look, until the 
Leafs proved they can beat Boston in the playoffs, which has been a very, very long time. Uh, I will stick with Boston. I do not see Washington beating the New York Rangers. I think they'll make it a five or six game series, but the Rangers should win. And look, the Islanders are playing well. I saw them firsthand Monday night against New Jersey. They have a good team. Can they make it a series with Carolina? Absolutely. But I think Carolina has more depth than they've had. They added Kuznetsov. They added Jake Getzel. Getzel's a big-time playoff performer. Freddie Anderson's healthy. And for some reason, Carolina gives this Islanders team fits come the playoffs. And I just like what Carolina has. I think they're the best team, overall team, in the Eastern Conference, in my opinion. Yeah, nobody's talking about them, which they should be very happy about. By the way, uh, Jersey Jim Berenger with us. Give him a follow on Twitter and Instagram. He covers the NHL unbelievably. Um, Philly's not in. The Penguins are not in. I, I, are people realizing how devastating that is for the Penguins? Because Kyle Dubas was brought in to save the day, and it didn't happen. I was like going over there in, in your mind, Jim. To me, I didn't have the Penguins as a playoff team, so I guess expectations for me, they're okay, they fell short of it. Um, but again, too little, too late, because to me, yeah, they make the move for Carlson early on, but is that what they really needed? Like, similar to what you saw in Toronto, was Tavares what they really needed at the time? They had other holes to fill. Um, bringing in an $11 million player, not necessary in Pittsburgh. The team was getting older. They probably should have made this rebuild a couple of years ago, and they didn't do it. However... You come up short, it is disappointing because then you go into your final game. It's meaningless against the Islanders. All nice for Jeff Carter. He scores in his final game. Very classy for the Islanders. But the Penguins went on that run a little bit too late. As much as Crosby had a great year at age 36, I mean, what he does is unbelievable. But for the Flyers, too, like you look on on their end, there was no expectations for that team to even make the playoffs. So, and I think everybody expected them to slide at some point. But the way they were playing, you thought, okay, maybe they can hold on. I think the fact they didn't have Sean Walker, injuries caught up, goaltending, guys weren't not used to playing this much hockey. It just takes a toll on your body. And, you know, to, I think the bigger disappointment should be in Detroit because you were there pretty much all year and you just let it get away because Dylan Larkin gets hurt for a stretch of time and you lose seven games in a row. You were right there. I think that's a bigger disappointment. Guy. You and I could ring up a phone bill. I guess the other night we did. I was going to let you go, but I got to ask you where you see Patrick Kane ending up. Is this it? I think, you know what? I, Detroit wants to bring him back. I think he wants to go back. I think with a full off season, I think he, I think he wants to sign a two or three year deal. I could see him back in Motown. I could see him, look, barring if they can figure it out, never say never. But imagine Patrick Kane in Chicago with Bedard. Look, stranger things have happened, right? Stranger things have happened, but imagine that one. It was pretty evident on Chris Chelios' night when Detroit came in there and Kane scored the winner in a shootout that they do still love him in Chicago. So wouldn't that be something? Uh, Jersey Jim, is your mom watching? Uh, my mom is watching. I uh, give a shout out to my mom who's recovering in the hospital, hip surgery. On Wednesday, going to be making a full recovery. So shout out to mom who's recovering in the hospital. She's beautiful, and she did a great job, Jimmy. Enjoy the hockey, brother. Let's do it again soon. Absolutely, Rod. Always a pleasure. Guys, enjoy the Stanley Cup playoffs. Take care. Jersey Jim Berenger from Full Press NHL. We'll be right back with all of your comments in audience takeover and a final sports update. We'll be right back on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The live sports experience is changing. Teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. Foreigner, live in 
Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner. With special guest, Headpins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. The race for the Cantera Seed Cup continues on Flow Hockey TV. SJHL playoffs are on. 60 minutes and who wants it more? Follow the race for the Cantera Seeds Cup on Flow Hockey TV. The live sports experience is changing. Teams and facilities are under pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. IKS Live has the right team to deliver. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience in the seats or streaming to you. IKS Live continues to bring you the best seat in the house. Hi, my name is Logan Stanko. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Okay, here we go. This, as always, will be fun. Overtime is for overtime hockey lanes in Calgary. If you haven't been there yet, shame on you. 28th Street Northeast, right, Randy? Head on down there, say hey to Randy and Michelle, tell them the RP show sent you, and uh, have the time of your life like I did. When I went there, I had to be dragged out and was back the next chance that I could. It's an amusement park for hockey players where skill and fun collide. Overtime hockey lanes in Calgary. Before I get to the sports update, from the text line, 902-518-3033, Gary in Penticton, that's Gary with two R's. He writes it, he says, the Leafs are a mess. Boston in five. Great show as usual. Thank you. I don't think they're a mess. They've been a mess, and I don't think they're a mess now, and I just saw them come through here the other night. Brad Tree Living looks very composed and relaxed. Sheldon Keefe looks as calm as he ever could. I think the Leafs win this one. Sorry, Clark, if I jinxed them. How about that? Tony... Tony and Cochran. Oh, with regards to our, uh, do you recall an injured player playing and your team winning or your injured player not playing and your team winning? Because that happens too. Tony and Cochran writes and he says, Bobby Bond, 1964, played with a broken leg to win the Stanley Cup. He goes, uh, sorry, and if you didn't know, I also watched the Leafs win in their last cup in 1967. Did you PVR it, Tony? Hot damn! I remember when I was nine. This is what 
you don't understand until you live somewhere else. And I'm talking about outside Canada. Anybody who's lived elsewhere can appreciate this. Anybody who hasn't won't. I remember a history book when I was in grade four at the age of nine flipping through it. And there was a photo of Bobby Bond, like a cartoon, being carried off the ice by his Leafs teammates after scoring the game-winning goal to win the Stanley Cup in a broken leg. This was like pumped into our heads as Canadian kids. And I realized here in America, they didn't have the same education system. Not better or worse, just different. They wouldn't know that, but we all know this. Ron in Calgary writes in on the text line. He says, you probably can't say it because you need your sponsors, but PVR to skip commercials, LOL. Psst. But you're watching live, so you're still watching the and support our sponsors, by the way. 902-518-3030. Uh, Jeff in Estevan, the Energy City, writes in. He says, I don't think Austin Matthews, I think Matthews gave away the MVP award as he didn't score his 70th. I guess we're going to vote, right? That's why they have a vote. Twisted Mike writes in regarding Jets fans being upset about start times. Twisted Mike says, Winnipeg people bitch about everything. The weather, the prices of Jets tickets. Like, what do you want? They lost their junior team because they couldn't support it when it's affordable. It'll be a matter of time you lose the Jets again, and then we'll hear all the crying. That's just his opinion, not mine. They lost the team, the, jet, the ice, because they didn't build a new arena, and they promised that they would. Pretty simple. The rink they had only held like 1,300. Wasn't that hard to fill that old barn. Here's the sports update. The BC Lions are proud to welcome the 2000 Great Cup Championship team to our wall of fame. When I say our, I just cut and pasted their news release. The ceremony takes place as part of Legends Night on Friday, September 13th against the Toronto Argonauts. Led by franchise passing leader Damon Allen, the two-headed backfield monster of Sean Millington and Robert Drummond, plus a stout defense, which included division all-stars Eric Carter and Herman Smith and charismatic game-breaker Carl Kidd. Maybe charismatic to you. The 2000 Lions defied the odds by becoming the first team to sip from the Grey Cup after finishing below 500 in the regular season. Again, Kudos to the 2000 BC Lions being honored Friday, September 13th at the home game against the Toronto Argonauts. Meanwhile, eight games to go and plenty still to be settled as the National Lacrosse League concludes the March to May with a slate of contests that all matter for playoff qualification, seating, or in some cases, both. Six teams are in and five more are grabbing at the final two slots. And it could come down to the season's very last game this weekend, the Philadelphia Wings at the Rochester Nighthawks on Sunday to have it all sorted out for the complete schedule and standings, of course, go to NLL.com. I don't really get it either. Big NLL fan here. The arenas are packed. The games are on national television, yet nobody really talks about it in the mainstream media. I don't get it. But at least we're giving you the mention and we're following what's going on. The sports update is for Landmark Cinemas. Wednesdays are made for movie twosomes, and you don't need to be Jack and Rose, Han and Chewy, or even Miss Piggy and Kermit. To get two admissions, two medium fountain drinks, one large popcorn, and your choice of candy for one great low price. But what you do need is a date or a partner to go. Because this deal is worth sharing. Landmark Cinemas movie twosome every Wednesday. Check your favorite Landmark Cinemas for showtimes. And, of course, the sports updates brought to you by Common Crown Brewing Company. Turning your everyday common beer into a unique and exceptional experience, visit commoncrown.ca. While we're here, now would be a good time to tell you, if you just can't get enough, us, uh, the Cats and Bolts podcast will be dropping this afternoon. Check my social media feeds and Serena's, too. She's at coach underscore Serena. We'll be previewing the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Florida Panthers in round one of the Stanley Cup playoff. Um, oh, yeah, Vince. Vince writes in. He's like, yikes, pretty harsh. All good, thick skin. I appreciate you, Vince. You need to watch more and write in more. You took that 
very well, I must say. He was the guy who initially started that 9 p.m. face-off time griping and laughed about it. And uh, he said, yeah, I like you, Vince. I like the cut of your jib. We're in the final minute of the RP show today. Um, Donnie Does Dishes. That's the account. Donnie Does Dishes. Writes in and just says simply, Guelph. What about it? Glenn in Medicine Hat. Oh, he's in Guelph? That's cool. Thanks for joining us, Donnie. Glenn says back in 2011 when Vancouver played Nashville in the playoffs, Predator Ridge Golf Sort Resort changed its name to Canucks Ridge. Why didn't they keep it that way? That's funny. Uh, Glenn is a golf guy. Thank you, Ryan in Saratoga. Allie in Texark, Dana, Wayne in BC, and all our regular P1s of the Rod Squad. We'll see you tomorrow for a football Friday right here at noon Eastern on Game Plus and Key Radio. Who has more fun than us? <laughs>